I'm Haley Taylor, and you're listening to The Rough Draft Diaries. If you've been following the connections on The Rough Draft Diaries, it's probably not too surprising to say that we're headed to the Victory Center for this episode of the program. It was mentioned a few episodes back with our interview with Harley King, an artist who offers meditative art courses through this organization. So we're going to learn a little bit more about the Victory Center today with the executive director, Diane Barnt. Well, the Victory Center was born because a group of doctors and nurses and community members felt that there was really great medical care in the community, but there was really nobody looking at the mind-body-soul connection. And that's how the Victory Center was born. And everything that we have done since then has been built on that premise of trying to help people feel better while they're going through their treatment. The organization was created 25 years ago, offering programs like support groups, meditation sessions, art lessons, yoga classes, nutrition courses, massage, free wigs, the list continues. You know, time after time, you can see the difference that this has. You know, People who take care of themselves, not just physically, but emotionally, spiritually, you know, they heal faster, they get better, they get better faster, they you know, have a better attitude, and the attitude can help, you know, help you heal better as well. And it's just kind of a cyclical thing. All these resources are free, which means Diane spends a good amount of time in her office throughout her day-to-day fundraising to keep these sources free to the public. But she also meets with clients, talking to each cancer patient as they deal with her diagnosis. You know, when I first started at the Victory Center, a lot of people said to me, oh my gosh, how can you work with cancer patients every day? That's got to be so depressing and so sad. And I mean, nothing could be farther than the truth. The Victory Center is a place of joy and, and happiness and all the time I see people that are just transformed by the experiences that they have there. Um, this one gentleman I can talk about, you know, he'd been coming to the Victory Center for a couple of years and he was a little disruptive at first. He was angry and he's slowly gotten more acclimated, more acclimated. And he's made these friends with this group of women and the four of them sign up for classes together and they go to exercise together and they go to art therapy together and when one of them is in the hospital or one of them gets sick they all check in with each other and they help each other and to see this this bond that has grown between these people brought together you know didn't know each other and came together at the victory center now are this like a second family for them and this incredible support for each other so the stories like that are so rewarding Although Diane does encounter those positive, uplifting interactions, another aspect of the job is getting used to saying goodbye when a patient doesn't make it through their treatment. I think one that really hit me was a woman that started coming to us, had been diagnosed with a pretty aggressive lung cancer as a really young new mom. And she got really engaged with the Victory Center really quickly and actually became a board member and was on our board for years. And she was such a light, just such a light of hope and and goodness. And, and she fought for such a long time. And when she, when she passed, that was a tough one. That was hard for everybody at that place. Because we just kept thinking, you know, if anybody can beat this, it's her. And and when you lose somebody like that, it hurts. And it's awful. And and I, I I have her memorial actually hanging on my bulletin board next, you know, by my desk. And I look at it every single day, and I'm reminded of somebody who faced this grueling, awful cancer journey with such dignity and grace. And I think that's a lesson that anybody can take away from it. Experiencing loss on a regular basis has equipped Diane to navigate the ups and downs of a cancer diagnosis quite well. She knows how simple and yet how complicated it can be when a dear friend or a family member is struggling through their diagnosis. Well, first of all, everybody's so different in how they handle their own diagnosis. And some people want to just, you know, be a turtle and close in on themselves and handle it by themselves or handle it with their close little circle of friends. And and you have to respect that because for some people that's what they need to do. And maybe somewhere down the road, 
they're going to come out a little bit and, and need some help. And as a friend or a loved one, just be there for them when they're ready for that. But then there's other people that need to share it and need to talk about it and need to know that people are there for them. So I think the best thing is to just take your cues from them and and to listen to them. And if they say, you know what, nope, really good, respect that and check in every now and then. And if they still feel that same way, you know, let them be. But the people that need you, you know, just be there and take your cues from them. And, you know, I think sometimes just the little nice things you can do for somebody whether they ask for it or not, is a nice thing. You know, taking their kids for a play date to give them a break or whatever little thing you can do, it seems to always be appreciated. And I think the other thing that a friend or loved one can do is to direct them to the Victory Center and encourage them to try it because it's free. It's not going to cost them anything and, and they might just find some support that they didn't even know they needed. I'm Haley Taylor, and thanks for listening to this episode of The Rough Draft Diaries.